We all tell our children not to play with their food. Perhaps we are wrong. Perhaps playing with food is the best way for young kids to get to know and love what they're eating. How many of you here were picky eaters in their childhood? Or, or maybe some of you still are. <laughs> I remember when I was around three years old, sitting at our kitchen table <laughs> and eating the chicken dumpling soup with vegetables my mom had made. Everyone else had cleared their plates except me. <laughs> and I could not go and play until mine was empty too. Only there was one problem. I could not finish the plate. The boiled carrots and broccoli were making me gag, and I could not eat them. So I was trying to come up with creative solutions on how to finish the plate without actually having to put the veggies in my mouth. Mom, I know you will be watching, and I'm sorry. <laughs> not my greatest moment. But I ended up throwing the vegetable cubes under the kitchen table and hiding them in my pockets when you were not looking. <laughs> Till this day, the taste of boiled vegetables is still of somewhat disgusting for me, and I can only have them when they're hidden amongst other delicious foods. So why was I behaving like this? What was wrong with me? What techniques should my mom have used to get me to warm up to the vegetables? Spoiler alert, it's not called the technique, force your child to finish the plate. <laughs> but how do you teach your child to like the vegetables? Is it an innate preference or a learned skill? What will determine if your child will grow up to become a broccoli hater or a connoisseur of exotic fruits and vegetables? Is it how many times we as parents offer it to them before giving up? Is it the genes? Or maybe, how much did he or she play with the broccoli when they were little? Most parents have probably noticed that at some point when their child is growing up, likely when they're around two years old, a toddler who has previously wanted to put everything in their mouth will morph to a very picky eater. When this happens, parents react in different ways. But the worst you could do is push your child to eat something they don't like. This could have serious consequences, and the child could grow up to become an adult with unhealthy eating habits and a limited dietary variety. But how do these happy explorers turn into picky and fussy eaters? The unwillingness to try novel foods is also called food neophobia. This phenomenon is often considered part of picky eating. However, it's important to clarify that pig eaters also refuse to eat foods that are known to them and might reject, reject foods solely based on their texture. Pickiness and food nephobia might have disadvantages because it could lead to a reduced exposure to healthful fruits and vegetables. Food nephobia develops at the time when children have weaned from their mothers. It happens because they have to start independently feed themselves and assess whether the object they're about to put in their mouth is edible, has the likelihood to make them ill, or maybe even poison them. With an aphobic kid, the parent will have two options. You can either play by your child's rules and feed them the foods they'll happily eat, foods that are governed by the simple salt, sugar, fat palate of junk food. Or you won't give up and continually challenge them with new tastes, textures, smells, colors, shapes. The second, more favorable option is, they is when they finally give up and succumb to your attempts. A general rule is that you have to try something eight to ten times to start liking it. How many of us, as parents, have continued to put that piece of broccoli in front of their toddler for eight times in a period of time and just then giving up? Studies show that most often parents give up after five tries. However, insisting while finding the rejected vegetables thrown under the kitchen table or hidden in mischievous locations might not be the best solution. There's an easier way to get your child to like the vegetables. 
Let them play with them. <laughs> Despite having researched this topic extensively and knowing the benefits of learning through sensory play, it is still of somewhat difficult for me to suggest such a thing. I grew up in a culture where playing with your food was not allowed because food has always been scarce. From as long as I can remember, there have always been these two rules. You should not play with your food and you should finish up all the food on your plate. This topic has been controversial in other cultures as well. In 1940s, a Brooklyn-based toy inventor, George Lerner, came up with an idea to insert pronged body and face parts into fresh fruits and vegetables to create a funny face man. The toy did not take off at first because post-World War II consumers did not like the idea of wasting food by playing with it. After several years of trying, Lerner finally succeeded and Mr. Potato Head was born. However, instead of fresh fruits and vegetables, the body parts were inserted into plastic figures. Today, the rule, don't play with your food, should be forgotten in parenting practices. Playing with your food means that you're putting a whole different meaning on the food item, changing the form. You will take away the pressure of having to eat it. Children can simply exercise their curiosity and explore the other sensory elements of food than taste. The smell, the texture, the sound it makes when you touch it. When the pressure of having to put it in their mouth has been taken away, they might finally feel comfortable enough that they might taste it and maybe even eat it. Early childhood is when children are most open to learning and developing new tastes especially the tastes that are not preferred from infancy, like sour and bitter. The form of games your kid could play with food are limitless. For example, making jewelry out of vegetables. <laughs> like the food designer Marie, Marie Vogelskang had her kids do on their birthday party. <laughs> Children were, were using their teeth to carve out veggie bling bling <laughs> from carrots, cucumbers and radishes. In the end, they also ended up eating them. Sensory games will help children discover their own passions and build their food courage. They will be open to try novel foods. All this will come with them to their adolescence and adulthood, and they will be adventurous eaters without any fear to explore the delicious world of food. So parents, Give your children food to play with. Let them explore it with all of their senses. And children, do me a favor and play with your food.